Lymphocytes must generate diverse receptors in order to recognize the many different antigens which the individual might encounter during their lifetime. B cells mature in the bone marrow and generate cell surface immunoglobulin as their receptor. Ultimately, if they become activated following contact with their specific antigen, they develop into plasma cells and will produce a secreted form of this immunoglobulin. These secreted immunoglobulins are the serum antibodies. T cells mature in the thymus where they generate diverse T cell receptors or TCRs. The process by which immunoglobulin diversity is generated is analogous, although the two molecules are quite distinct. Inside each pre-B cell nucleus, there are sets of genes which encode the protein chains, which combine to form immunoglobulin. A molecule of immunoglobulin consists of two identical heavy chains and two identical light chains joined by disulfide bonds and non-covalent interactions. Each of the two chains is encoded by its own DNA. There is one gene locus for the heavy chain and two loci for light chains termed kappa and lambda, although a B cell will only use one or other of the sets of light chain genes. Heavy and light chain genes are unusual because they undergo a process of recombination during B cell development. The gene for the heavy chain or light chain is assembled from different gene segments by the recombination. The heavy chain gene locus has numerous V gene segments and several J gene segments, but also includes additional D diversity segments, so that a heavy chain variable domain is encoded by a recombined VDJ gene. Each light chain gene locus has numerous V gene segments and several J gene segments which can recombine at random to make a recombined VJ gene which will encode the variable antigen binding domain of the light chain. The DNA base sequences flanking the V, D, and J gene segments cause them to become aligned during B cell development and enzymes break and rejoin the DNA strands to make the final recombined VJ or VDJ gene. This random process of gene segment recombination provides an enormous amount of diversity in the antigen binding domains of the antibodies in different B cells. In order to synthesize immunoglobulin, the cell must transcribe the immunoglobulin gene. The DNA strands separate and RNA polymerase makes a faithful transcription of the immunoglobulin gene. The transcript includes the recombined gene for the variable domain, the genes for the constant domains, and the intervening stretches of DNA which do not encode protein. These non-coding sections are termed introns, and the coding portions are exons. This process is called transcription. In a second stage, the RNA transcript is processed to make messenger RNA by removal of the introns. The messenger RNA migrates out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, ribosomes translate the information contained in the mRNA. Each triplet of bases in the mRNA encodes one amino acid in the protein. Initially, a short signal sequence is translated. This binds to a signal recognition protein, which blocks further translation until the mRNA is docked on the endoplasmic reticulum. Translation of the protein chain now occurs across the endoplasmic reticulum. The signal sequence is removed by cleavage. In the endoplasmic reticulum, the new heavy and light chains combine to form immunoglobulin. Vesicles separate from the endoplasmic reticulum to join the Golgi apparatus, where the immunoglobulin is glycosylated. Finally, vesicles containing the immunoglobulin bud from the Golgi body and migrate to the plasma membrane.
At the cell surface, the immunoglobulin remains in the membrane, presenting its antigen binding site to the outside. However, if the cell has produced secreted immunoglobulin, this is released as a soluble molecule into the lymph. Antibodies are folded into domains, which are named according to whether they are variable V or constant C, and according to whether they belong to the light chain L or heavy chain H. T cells replicate in the subcapsular region of the thymus. At this stage, they start to recombine genes for the T cell receptor in an analogous way to the B cell's recombination of antibody genes. Within the nuclei of all pre-T cells are genes for T cell receptor chains termed alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Most T cells use the alpha and beta genes, so the TCR is formed of an alpha chain and a beta chain. The beta gene locus contain V, D, and J gene segments, while the alpha gene locus contains V and J gene segments. These are analogous to those of antibodies, but completely distinct. During T cell development, the beta gene recombines a particular combination of V, D, and J gene segments to make a recombined VDJ gene. Similarly, one of the alpha V gene segments recombines with one of the J gene segments at random to make a recombined VJ gene, which will encode the variable antigen binding domain of the alpha chain. The recombined genes together with the genes for the C domain and the intervening introns are transcribed into RNA. This RNA is then processed to make messenger RNA for the alpha and beta chains. Once in the cytoplasm, ribosomes synthesize alpha and beta chains across the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. The T cell receptor is now formed by assembly of one alpha chain with one beta chain. The T cell receptor now associates with other components of the T cell receptor complex termed CD3, not shown here. The receptor is processed and vesicles pinch off from the Golgi carrying the assembled receptor complex to the cell surface. Where it remains anchored to become the T cell's receptor of antigenic peptides. The alpha and beta chains are folded into variable V 